and welcome to the very first episode of the Knits and Notions podcast with me, Kira. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to finally be making this podcast. So, um, like I said, my name's Kira. If you're watching this, you most likely know who I am already because you're probably coming from my Instagram, um, which my Instagram handle is at strangebun. And since this is my very first podcast episode, I will do a little introduction and talk a little bit about everything, like why I'm here <laughs> and um, how I started knitting and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, so like I said, my name's Kira. I am a knitter. I'm a spinner. I'm a newbie quilter. I'm a crafter of all sorts. Um, I'm a sculpty sculptor, as I like to call myself. And I'm just generally a creative, crafty person. I use they, them pronouns. And um, I've been knitting since I was in, in and around fifth or sixth grade. But I didn't start like officially becoming a more proficient knitter until the pandemic hit in 2020. I believe it was around March or April there where I started knitting because I really wanted to learn how to make socks. And then I found out about the knitting community and Ravelry and everything and that was a rabbit hole I fell down and never came out of. <laughs> and, and that's probably also why you're here too. So yeah, I don't know what other introductory things I could say about myself. Oh, I guess I'm filming this from my home office, my crafty space. You probably know this space well if you follow me online. I'm always posting about how messy and disastrous it gets which I love as I create and make things all day every day and it is currently located in the high desert region of Southern California which I have been living here since around August 2019 um, I don't know how many years that is it feels like a lot shorter time than it has been just because part of that time has been spent just within these walls. Um, but yeah, I live here with my partner, Erin, and our lovely rabbit, Spicy, which I could cry just talking about her because <laughs> I love her so much. And again, if you follow me online, you know all about her and her lovely bunny self. And I'm a rabbit lover and she's my first bunny. Um, and she's a house rabbit and she might pop in and out of here at some point during this episode but i hope not because there's a lot of wires around um currently as i have my setup um so yeah i really have been wanting to start a knitting podcast since i started knitting basically or started becoming more of a proficient knitter and um, knitting garments and everything like that i think it was around october 2021 when I first discovered that knitting podcasts were a thing and that excited me. Um, I loved knitting podcasts because I'm a big podcast listener and YouTube video watcher as I knit. And so I must have gotten recommended a knitting podcast when I was looking at like tutorials and things like that online. And I believe my first knitting podcast was The Gentle Knitter, Nicole. Um, if you don't know who Nicole is, she is a beautiful knitter. Um, I think she's also kind of multi craftual You know, she does spinning and I think she's dabbled a little bit in quilting more recently. Um, but she has a lovely aesthetic. Um, very nature -y, very rustic, very cottagecore vibes. And so that immediately sucked me in. <laughs> and um, I just loved how her podcasts were filmed. And then I started listening to more knitting podcasts, um, like the Crimson, Crimson Stitchery, um, run by Anushka, who's a beautiful designer, beautiful knitter, and super um, well-educated, I guess, knitter as well. She has a lot of cool tips and tricks um, that I've learned a lot from her. And um, I've also listened to Cozy Cardigan's podcast, um, Mel of 
little, big little yarn co who i also follow on instagram um and i love her podcast as well and also b of the maker b podcast and uh, maker b instagram and i also love their podcast so much and i also love listening to tiara who's also one of my instagram friends hi tiara if you're listening so that's watching um and i love her podcast the love stitch knits and so i mean you're probably gathering i just really love knitting and knitting podcasts and i really just wanted to start my own um but to be honest for a long time i didn't i was kind of nervous i didn't have the guts to do it at first um you know i tried out a couple things like i got this microphone that's sitting in front of me that i don't know if it's doing that much and i had all this stuff planned um and then nothing quite seemed like it was working i also had trouble kind of um you know sticking to something and kind of being consistent with it and deciding like okay i'm gonna film this i'm gonna edit this i'm gonna post it i would get to the filming part and then i'd kind of shy away from the editing part and the posting part and then it never happened <laughs> and now it is july of 2022 and here i am um so yeah, and I, I think I also had all these expectations on myself that it needed to be professional, it needed to be well done, I needed to be a better knitter, I needed to make more things, I needed to have cool acquisitions. Um, but it was really through watching other knitting podcasters that I realized that none of that was necessary. Um, it could just be chill and cool in a crafty space and just a time for me to talk and talk and talk. <laughs> all about my craftiness and my crafty loves and all my knitting and everything I do. I don't want to rattle off the list again because I do too many crafts. Um, actually not enough, but I love them all. Um, anyways, so yeah, I mean, guess what you could expect from this podcast is that it'll be pretty laid back. I don't intend to do a lot of editing on it just because I want it to be chill. And I also want it to be kind of a format where people who follow me online can kind of hear my voice, um, get to know me a little bit more, kind of understand my energy and my personality a little bit more as well. Um, because I find that that is something that I should really struggle to put across on my Instagram. Um, because so much of Instagram is very curated and uh, very specific to the aesthetic on there and different things like that. I think sometimes not everybody's personality comes through or at least for me, I'm not very good at it. And I feel like that version of myself doesn't quite encapsulate who I am. And this is also, you know, another kind of curated space. Of course, the internet, we're all performing and stuff, <laughs> but, um, it's more authentic to me, I think. And it's also a better way for me to express myself because I'm very bad at expressing myself through written words. Um, I'm better at like kind of going off the cuff and rambling and everything in my head just spilling out of my mouth. And so I was like, of course I need to start a podcast. That's what they're for, right? <laughs> so that is what you can expect here. Um, let's see, okay, so today i have planned to go through some of my whips my works in progresses um, of all my different crafts that i'm currently working on um, some finished objects because recently i've gotten my knitting mojo back in a big way and i've been making so many things knitting wise <laughs> and um also just like chit chatting you know a little bit about myself and about what's going on in my life um and hopefully if anybody watches this you can tell me in the comments as well what's up with you um so before i get too deep into it i want to also showcase what i'm currently wearing so i'm currently wearing my cozy classic raglan light designed by the lovely jesse may um everybody who's watching this should know her <laughs> and if you don't that's fine you should just look her up um, her designs are beautiful size inclusive simple easy quick 
beautifully written, beautifully designed, um, and are some of my favorite knits I've knit <laughs> since I've been knitting. <laughs> favorite knits I've knit, if you will. I'm sorry if the microphone just made noise. I'm trying not to bump. Um, but anyways, this is my cozy, co cozy, co crook, y'all. <laughs> I cannot say this. You know what it is. I said it already. My sweater. <laughs> Um, and it is knit in a very special yarn, which is Pearl Soho's Linen Quill. Um, funny story about this is that I initially purchased this yarn in order to participate in the currently ongoing Pearl Soho knit along of, um, I forget what the design is called. It's like their very basic raglan sweater. I think it's called like the lightweight raglan pullover. I think that's exactly what it's called actually. Um, and it's knit in their linen quill or you can also knit it in their cattail silk yarn. And so I thought it would be fun to participate in a knit along because I haven't really done too many. Um, so I wanted to hop right in there and try it out. I even knit like most of the sweater. I knit like both the sleeves, the body, and then I realized my gauge was really off um, in a not fun way because I was knitting this sweater in fingering weight yarn on size 5 needles and a very tight gauge um, and it took me a really long time to get to that point. And so when it was kind of turning out like very oversized in a way that I didn't find comfy to me, I didn't find flattering for my myself and I thought I would never wear that. I decided to just frog it. <laughs> and that's another thing. If you follow me on Instagram, you might notice that I very often frog my makes and remake them. Um, not because they're imperfect or anything. I definitely keep all the imperfections in my knits. It's usually a fit thing for me. Um, because I'm finding as a more beginner to intermediate knitter, I'm still unsure of the exact fit I would like in garments. And that isn't always, you know, necessarily um, the fit that is my size. You know, sometimes I want something that's more oversized, kind of like this one, um, or something that's a little bit tighter, even if the pattern is knit with positive ease. Maybe I want something a little bit more negative ease wise. You know, so that's something I've been really figuring out for myself. Um, and so sometimes I'll knit something thinking like, oh yeah, I want this to fit with, you know, more negative or positive ease. And I'll try it on and I'm like, mm, I could go down a little bit or I could go up a little bit, you know. And so that's usually where I've re-knit. Um, but in this case, I was kind of thinking, oh, okay, I'll just restart the cow. Um... But then I was kind of like, I don't know if I like this sweater. <laughs> this is not a diss to Pearl Soho at all. I, it's just, you know, we all have our preferences. I don't know why I said it like that, but it's, it just wasn't my thing. And I think I was just more excited about this yarn because I was like, oh great, uh, an excuse to buy this yarn I've been wanting for so long. Um, because I heard Gentle Miller talk about it, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, so... I frogged that and then I knit this sweater, which I love very much. It's super cozy um, and classic and light. <laughs> and um, But genuinely, Linen Quill ha is a delight to knit with and a delight to wear. Um, it's currently hot as heck here in the desert, which it usually is. Um, but I think especially this year, as many people in the United States are experiencing it's extra hot this year and you know I keep on seeing all these posts about how this is the coolest summer of our lives that we'll ever experience again which is sad because it's like a hundred I've heard it was like a hundred degrees in the Midwest at some points and that's unheard of and scary anyways <laughs> this is still a nice sweater to wear indoors even when the world is burning around us so that's nice I apologize that kind of got dark um but you know climate change global warming is a thing <laughs> um but yeah so more about the sweater um I was also inspired to knit this by one of my favorite 
makers on Instagram, who's also one of my Instagram friends, McCool Knits, right? McCool Makes. Oh my god. I'm sorry if I'm butchering everybody's usernames. I'll put it, you know, maybe I'll edit that in. <laughs> maybe I'll do some editing because I am inevitably, inevitably going to mess up everybody's names because I didn't take any notes. Anyways, um, but yes, I was inspired to, to knit this also by my Instagram friend, which side note, if we speak on Instagram at all, like in the DMs, anything, if we follow each other, you're my Instagram friend. <laughs> and that's how I refer to you, to my IRL friends, to my partner, to everybody. And I'm like, oh yeah, my Instagram friend. So hi, Instagram friends. <laughs> um, yeah, McCool Knits. Should I just check? Okay, I Googled it. Christy of McCool Makes. Um, <laughs> Who is one of my Instagram Sorry, friends? I didn't understand. Oh god. Okay, Google, go away. Okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay, um, this is something else you might have to expect from my podcast is that I go bounce everywhere around. And I'm also drinking iced coffee. So that might be contributing to the scatterbrainedness. As I was saying, my Instagram friend, Christy of McCool Makes, knit this sweater without decreasing in the arms at all so that you get this really cool, fun bell sleeve effect. And um, Christy also knit it as a, I think they also knit it as a, like a bracelet sleeve slash shoulder sleeve situation, which I love doing um, because I hate rolling up my sleeves i hate how it gets like super tight on my arms um and if i want something tight on my arms i'd rather have it like around my wrist area and not like you know up here or anywhere it's just uncomfy for me um so i loved the idea of making these very loose sleeves and you don't have to do any sleeve decreases which i'm not always a fan of you know that part's not fun i like to have the mindless knitting and just boop, pop out a sleeve so yeah, that is what I'm wearing, and uh, I didn't make any other modifications besides the sleeves to this. And I also, you know, I wear it pretty crop cropped, um, because I'm like everybody, you know, we're stylish, we crop our sweaters. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm also wearing another fun knit, which is this necklace, and this is by one of my all-time favorite fiber artists slash crafter um named who goes under the name um oh my god why can't i think of it um, 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 um hands and curls yes and this person has an etsy shop that i have been purchasing from for a very long time um i think i first made my first purchase from them in 2014 2016 maybe um you can see i have more of more of my hands and curls necklaces here those are all hands and curls except for like one i think which i made but yeah i love these necklaces they're just so fun um i loved these even before i became more of like a knitter knitter and now i just think that they're, they're fun crafty accessories that i need to have and they're what I would wear if I was a cool like art teacher vibe. <laughs> this is what I think about. Um, but it's also, yeah, I have all these necklaces. So you usually see me wearing these. So yeah, that is all of what I'm wearing. Oh my gosh, I went on for so long. <laughs> but hopefully that's what you want if you're watching this. So my first current work in progress is this pair of socks, <laughs> which I'm very, 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 very excited about. Um, and I know it just looks like literally the most basic sock you've ever seen, and it is, but um, I have a very storied past with socks. So <laughs> this sock is um, following a pattern called Emily's Favorite Socks by, um, oh gosh, I don't know. The knitwear designer, I believe it's Emily Foden, who is also the yarn dyer for Viola um, Fibers. I think it's like Viola in the Moon. Oh my gosh. 
I told myself I was going to take notes. I will do better next time. I'll leave everything again in the description as well. Um, everything I talk about, I will put in the description with accurate information so that I don't have to edit the heck out of this video. But please bear with me. And if you want to know anything, just look in there to double check. <laughs> but these are definitely Emily's favorite socks is the pattern. And I may, I've made a pair of these before, um, but I made them with a slightly thicker fingering yarn. And I made them on my usual, you know, sock needles, which are, I use Addy Turbos, I believe in the size um, zero, which is like, I think size US zero is 2.25, if I'm not mistaken. Once again, it'll be in the description because I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I knit those. And they're great. I really like this pattern. It's super it's simple, easy to follow. Um, and it's a cute sock, like just very cute, basic, comfy sock. But the pair I knit previously were way too big on me, um, which is great for like a house sock kind of situation. But personally, I don't really, you know, want to wear really big socks out because then, you know, they're kind of like bunching in your shoes. It's uncomfortable. It's not a really fun sensation. Um, and yeah, so sadly I'm only going to wear those ones in the house, but I really like the pattern and I've been really wanting to perfect socks for myself because, um, so funny story, <laughs> my first thing I knit when I started knitting again back all the way back at the beginning of the pandemic were socks. I had seen um, my boyfriend's, my partner's um, sister knitting socks before and so I was like you know what I really want to learn how to knit socks. I've never you know at that point I had never knit a clothing item for myself and socks to me seemed kind of a good starting point because they're a small project. Um, and I quickly learned that they're very involved, especially for a, some, a knitter who had only previously knit like garter stitch scarves before. Um, but I had a lot of fun with the process and I loved learning all the new steps and everything like that. But all the socks I had made didn't really fit me. You know, they're either like too tight, um, too short in the foot, you know, the toe's not quite right, um, too big, all those sorts of things. And that is where this sock comes in because this is the perfect sock. I finally made myself the perfect sock and I'm so hyped on it. Um, so here's a lowdown. <laughs> so Emily's favorite socks, I modified the pattern slightly. So I cast on only 64 stitches and I um, also knit like a little, you can see here, like a garter edge. Um, on the sides of my heel flap. Um, but other than that, that's the only adjustments, modifications that I made. And this sock is knit with holst garn here in the cuff, in the heel, in the toe for the contrast. And it is their super soft yarn. And then the leg and the foot is knit in biche bouche, which is so much fun to say. Um, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. I'm not 100% sure on the colorway because I threw away the the skein band thing. My bad. Um, but I think it's like a gray, it's like a grayish uh, brown tone. You know, it has like flecks and of different colors, brownish, grayish, all that fun stuff. Um, I love these yarns. They're so beautiful. Um, both of them are woolen spun yarns and um, they're a lighter fingering weight, which I think makes them perfect for socks for me because I love knitting socks at a tight, tight gauge. Um, and since these are also non superwash yarns, I think the tight gauge will help them be a little bit more hardy um, in terms of wear. I will say these socks probably won't wear super well um, given that they're both in like woolen spun, um, like I think like maybe like four ply yarns. I'm not 100% sure on the plies, but you know, they're gonna probably lose some some spots quicker than your typical super wash socks will, which is to be expected. And I don't really care. I wanna learn how to do mending anyways. So I'm giving myself the opportunity here. 
Um, but yeah, so this lock is really simple. You know, I just did a one by one rib at the top. It's a three by one rib in the body um, of the sock and then a very standard slip stitch heel and you know, the whole shebang. It's beautiful, simple. I think this toe is called like the wedge toe, you know, kitchener at the end, standard decreases along the sides, beautiful. Um, yeah, these yarns are just, they work beautifully together. I love the way that the woolen, the woolly woolenness of it looks. Um, it's something I always really like about woolen spun yarns is they're great for color work especially, but I find even just in this application where you see the colors merging into each other, like it seems like more, you know, organic, <laughs> like more fading together versus like a very super stark contrast. I don't know how to really explain it. Um, but yeah, they're beautiful, beautiful yarns, beautiful socks. I'm, I have the other one on needles currently, and I'm very excited to finish them and wear them probably all fall long. Um, and here I also have a ball of the Holst Garn. Um, it's in the color Heath, and this they're super soft. And I did want to just briefly talk about this yarn because I don't see too, too many people knitting with it. And I think it's amazing um, for multiple reasons. Um, so I will say Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery has made an entire video all about Holst Garn. So if you really, really want to know more about it, definitely, definitely check out that video and I'll link that in the description. Um, but I find this yarn to be an amazing, super budget friendly. I will put the pricing um, on the screen somewhere, <laughs> but it, it was super budget friendly. I had it shipped to me because I don't have a local yarn store that has it, but I do know that there are local yarn stores around the country that do stock it. Um, I believe Yarn Social in Kansas City has it, so if you live in the Kansas City area, definitely check them out. Um, I've never been there or shopped there, but I just know I follow them online, and I'm pretty sure they stock Holstgarm, which would make it even more worth it price-wise if you could omit the shipping. Um, but for those of you who don't know, why this yarn is so cheap <laughs> is it's basically sold to you in these like really compact balls and it it does not have the spinning oil washed out of it um so from what i understand i'm not 100 percent sure but spinning oil is something used in the production of yarn making um i'm assuming to help it kind of glide through the machinery a little bit better um you know when they're like spinning yarn don't hold me on that. Um, you know, I should have probably done more research about it, but it does have that in there. Um, so when you first kind of get it, you know, it looks super compact and like kind of ropey in a way, you know, if I can pull a little bit out, you can kind of see, like, it doesn't look like super plush and nice. Um, but it's a hundred percent wool. And what you basically do or what I recommend doing, is when I got get this yarn and what I'm about to use it, I put it in a hank and I wash it and I I wash it a couple times, you know, just typical in a bowl with water with wool wash. Um, let it sit, you know, don't fucking agitate. Sorry, I said the F word. <laughs> don't like agitate it a lot. Um, and then drying it and then I'm use and then I knit with it. And I found that has made the process very enjoyable for me. Um, I tried knitting with it before washing it and it's just hard to get a good idea of your gauge that way because it blooms a lot more after washing. Um, so you can see here, like it, it's just beautiful. And I love this colorway as well. There's like these sprucey elements, these browns. It's a beautiful kind of like ochre chartreuse color that I'm very into right now. Um, you probably see it all over my Instagram feed because I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just a beautiful yarn. And it's wool and spun. It's 100% wool. And so it makes it super nice to use for color work. Um, I'm really wanting to knit a color work project with it. Maybe a sweater or a shawl. But I'm not 100% sure of the project yet. But it's definitely on my mind. I actually have a swatch in this yarn currently to determine if I want to knit um, the colorwork project sweater out of it but we'll see um, 
But another great thing about this yarn is that in this ball, it looks small, right? There's 314 yards or 287 meters in it. And it's a 50 gram ball. <laughs> like, it's a great, great steal. And especially when I put, you know, when you see the pricing for these, like, it's amazing for the amount of yarn you get, the quality of the yarn, everything. Um, and I just love accessible yarns that aren't always just acrylic yarns, which like literally no shade. I have a whole closet of acrylic yarn over there that I inherited from my grandmother. I hold very dear to me. I don't want to get rid of it. And I will try to find a use for it. But I think there's something to be said about people who do want to knit with woolen wools, you know, wools that I think could easily be duped for something like a biche bouche. I don't think biche bouche is like super expensive, but you know, it's a higher price um, and, you know, could be out of people's um, budgets. For me, it's not like in my budget. I got it as a gift. So, so it's really nice, but I think these yarns could easily be swapped for each other. So that's my tip of the day. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that was embarrassing. <laughs> but that is my tip, you know. I think these yarns are, they work great together, but they're also great substitutes for each other. And so that's that on that. <laughs> and so I will talk about the swatch that I do have in Holstgarn as well, in these two other colorways, or three other colorways. So you can kind of see it. I'm sorry, I don't wanna mess with my microphone. Um, so this is a starting of a swatch for the Udo pullover sweater um, by Orlan Souche, um, also known online as Tet Besh. Um, and it's a beautiful colorwork yoke sweater. Um, it has like little like tree designs. I'll pop in a picture of it somewhere, I'm sure. And also just top link to it down below on Ravelry um, but yeah so I started kind of a little color work swatch I don't think it looks bad at all but I'm just not sure if these are like the color vibes I want to go with and the more I'm kind of knitting it the more I'm kind of thinking mm, maybe I want to use this yarn for something else you know sometimes that happens um, I'm very much like a go with the wind type of knitter <laughs> in my mind. Um, you know, I lose interest sometimes in projects quickly, but then I quickly gain pro interest in other projects. And I kind of let myself do that just because knitting and crafting is supposed to be fun and I don't want to ever force myself to do something, especially because I'm not like, I'm not test knitting anything and I'm not sample knitting. I don't have any obligations here. You know this is just for me for fun time <laughs> so i really try to just like let myself do whatever i want um so this is kind of like you know i don't know i don't know if i'm feeling it i definitely don't really like these these colors together i mean they're very foresty and fun but not the vibe i don't think for um color work that i'd like to do i would ideally like to do something a little bit more muted i love low contrast color work um which is ironic because i have a very high contrast color work project i just finished but generally when i see color work i really love people who do like a lower contrast more complementary colors and like you know fun fa color families um like earthy tones or whatever your thing is you know i love speaking of colorways i love knitters who knit like bright fun pastels everything I admire them so much because it's not my it's not my go-to to knit right but I think the aesthetic and the commitment to an aesthetic like that is amazing and I love I love knitters who have like they know their colors and everything um soft adornments hi <laughs> another one of my Instagram friends um is one of those knitters who has a very beautiful color story um, in all of their knits and um, knits and colors that are out of my comfort zone or in my aesthetic zone I guess um, but look amazing on them and I low-key want to knit something <laughs> in those vibes one day just because their knits are so beautiful anyways so yeah that's this swatch um, so moving on to what else I'm making <laughs> 
So I'm going to hop into my spinning whip currently because I don't have any other knitting whips, but I have currently been spinning my little heart out and I have been making these gorgeous little turtle balls <laughs> on my Turkish spindle. Woo! <laughs> of this beautiful fiber by Artifacts of Appreciation um, on Instagram, who is a spinner, I believe a knitter as well, um, but who I purchased fiber from because they also do um, beautifully blended bats that they sell. And I bought this on a whim <laughs> because I was like, oh my gosh, I really want really beautiful fiber to spin and they had just had a shop update and so i bought this sock set and it's called the spring harmony sock set and it comes in this very beautiful charming cute paper bag like how could you turn this down um everything about artifacts of appreciation appreciation's aesthetic just like speaks to you know the woodland fairy in me that wants to just like spin beautiful wool inspired by plants and flowers um and so i'll try not to crinkle this too much but basically what this sock set came with was a bunch of these mini bats and here's one that i still have yet to spin look at how beautiful and precious so there's a little string in there my bad but it's so beautiful like come on are you kidding me <laughs> so many beautiful fibers in there um so it's a blended bat of romney corydale and alpaca fibers coming from skybrook farm um i believe artifacts of appreciation is also based in canada so i'm not 100 percent sure on the farm and everything like that um i'm sure i've seen about it on their page but Right now, I'm not sure, but it also came with a little naturally dyed um, skein of kid mohair. That is also just like beautiful. It's a beautiful green color. It's currently in this like bowl of yarn back here, buried, so I won't be able to show it right now without digging and interrupting everything. Um, but yeah, so this is like it, it was intended, uh, I guess, curated to. Um, be knit into these really beautiful stripey socks and that is my intention to um, knit socks with these and so this is my very first spin where I've kind of spun intentionally um, with a project in mind because typically I kind of just like spin and see where my hands take me you know if we're doing fingering weight if we're gonna do something chunkier i just kind of like go and then i figure out what i want to make with it after um because i'm i guess i consider myself more of like a beginner ish spinner um i've been spinning for a year now um but i don't typically seek out a ton of resources in terms of like what the correct way to spin is which I don't really think there is one but you know there's ways to make yarn um intentionally and um i've looked up a little bit and that's kind of what i've done with this project is i kind of looked into how to spin for socks um so i've spun these singles very um tightly with a lot of twist in them and the hope is that, you know, these high twist singles will be plied together and create a nice strong base for a sweet sock. And the mohair skein is included in this set because it's intended to be held double with the yarn that you create in the heavier wear areas to add a little bit of strength from the silk which I love that idea and I think it's going to look beautiful, which I've already seen um, a sock that was on Artifacts of Appreciation's page knit with this set. It's just like stunning. Um, so, you know, in the heel and in the toe, you can weave in the mohair and the silk and just add that extra layer of strength and security and also pop of color that is, looks so springy and beautiful, even though it's not spring anymore, but I don't care. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've just been really loving to spin this, um, and I've been spinning it on a very special spindle of mine, and this is by Enid Ashcroft Spindles. I will link to them down below in the description, because they make the most beautiful spindles. 
Um, I first became aware of Enid Ashcroft spindles from Lynn the Gray, Lind on um, Linda on Instagram, who's another one of my Instagram friends. Hello. Um, Linda is a beautiful spinner, knitter, everything, weaver. Oh my gosh. Um, they make the most beautiful things. And I had seen so many of, you know, their spindles from Enid Ashcroft spindles and I was like oh, I would really like one and so I don't remember when I purchased this but I did and I had always been wanting to spin on a Turkish spindle for the longest time because it creates these beautiful just like patterns when you wind it on to the cup and yeah I was just taken by it so this is my very special lovely dainty little um, Turkish spindle I love spinning with it and it took me a little bit to get used to so I can show you um, this was one of the first yarns that I spun on this spindle and it wasn't a very intentional spin and I didn't really know what I was doing um, and this spindle is very light I believe it only weighs a total of 14 grams and my traditional top girl drop spindle that I learned to spin on is a lot heavier. Um, it was made as a, I think it was labeled as like a student spindle. Um, I can link it down below if I can find it. I believe it was from the Woolery online. Um, but I was very used to a heavy spindle that gave me a lot of twist even without having to add a ton of, you know, energy to make more twist. Um, this one you have to kind of like spin it a little bit harder if that makes sense um again not the greatest at explaining spinning things um because i don't really know a lot of the correct terminology but this yarn is beautiful um nonetheless it is a little bit um looser spun and plied than i would like and so I didn't decide to spin more of this fiber on that spindle. I'll probably spin it on my big drop spindle. Um, but this is fiber dyed by the lovely Kumase. Uh, I believe that's how you say it. I apologize. Um, Kumase, I'm not sure. I will link to them down below. Um, but they're a beautiful like um, Dyer who dyes roving and this is a Falkland roving by them and I have more of it in my crafty closet just off screen that I want to spin more of but yeah so this is this is one of my first yarns I finished on my metal Turkish spindle um, and it's not awful but it's just you know a little more loosey-goosey than I would like okay so I'm not sure quite how I want to orient or like organize my podcast um, feel free to let me down know down below but I'm kind of thinking I want to keep all of my works in progress together and that includes some of my works in progress from other crafts that I'm currently doing um, so I'm gonna jump into a little bit of my quilty sewing whips right now but let me know in the just uh, in the comments or on my Instagram if you'd prefer me just like stick all to knitting all at once and then hop to other crafts or what you'd like. But I don't have that many quilting whips um, because I'm a completely hand sewing sewer, sewist. <laughs> um, I do everything by hand, so it takes me a lot longer um, to make things, obviously, <laughs> that way, um, which is great and it's, it's fine. But um, yeah, so I'll just hop into a few of my little whips for quilting. Um, so I have this fun stack of things that doesn't really look like much of anything. And it's from a book here. I'm going to grab the book really quick ah, off my bookshelf. So if you've seen this book, you know what's about to go down. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is a beautiful book. Um, it's by Yoko Saito, who's a Japanese um, quilter who's known I believe for hand quilting just beautiful works I mean look at this cover yeah that's all I need to say right <laughs> like it's beautiful um, but I instantly was inspired by this book as well as by my boyfriend's sister um, to start quilting um, specifically for patchwork I just love the look of patchwork and so this little project 
is a bunch of individual sheets of my own design of patchwork. Um, this is basically fabric from a pillowcase, which if you see that little quilt over here on the door, my first ever quilt, this is also the same fabric. It's just from an Ikea pillowcase I've had that was 100% cotton. Um, so I have made a bunch of these little sheets of patchwork sewing in these fun geometric designs. And look at those seams. Just saying. <laughs> Just sewing things. Oh my god. <laughs> so silly. Um, I am a very silly person if you can't tell. Um, but yeah, like, just I had a lot of fun just like piecing together these random geometric designs in this grayscale. Um, I love gray. You know, most of our house is gray with like pops of color because that's very much mine and my partner's aesthetic. And so I made all these patches or sheets of fabric essentially, I guess, Patrick fabric with the intention to cut it out into a pattern in the book. So you can see here, I have this like parchment paper, paper with these vague shapes <laughs> drawn on them um, to follow a pattern in this book. I'm gonna go ahead and flip to it so I can show you what it will become, hopefully. Okay, so I want to knit this a darling precious baby pouch baby pouch oh my goodness are you kidding me are you kidding me <laughs> so cute and like the little charger phone charger like i could put chargers in there <laughs> i don't know like headphones i just think i could find so many cute fun little things to put in this pouch and so i'm not an experienced sewist um I'm loosely becoming more like intermediate in terms of some very basic quilting things. I think I'm getting a lot better at that in terms of like the basics of quilting. But in terms of following patterns and knowing how to make this turn into a pouch, I'm not experienced in. So um, I talked briefly with my partner's sister who is a much more experienced quilter and sewer than I am. Um, she, she was named Julie. Hi, Julie, if you watch this. Um, or anyways. <laughs> um, so she kind of said, you know, you could make the patches in the, the shapes of the pattern or I could make these like sheets of fabric essentially and then cut the pattern out of these. And so that's kind of what I intend to do. I think that'd be easier and I wanted to kind of follow my own um, patchwork design. Please hold while I sip a coffee. I have not talked this long in many a week. <laughs> many a day, actually, because I talk quite heavily with my cousin on the phone. Um, anyways, so yeah. So yeah, I, I plan to cut the pattern out of these sheets and We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll definitely be posting more about it online, but it's exciting. I like learning new skills, so that's that. And there are so many patterns in this book that I really want to make. Pouches, everything. Like I could just like flip to a random page, and it's like yes. Like how precious a little coin purse. It's it's just so precious and delightful and fun and I just want my whole house to look like these images so yeah um definitely recommend this book if you want some inspiration to start quilting as if you need any more because there's so many beautiful quilters online but Yoko Saito is one of my biggest inspirations I would love to quilt like her one day um so yeah there's that whip for quilting and then there are whips which are so fun um well this one's actually a finished object but I will talk about it nonetheless so this is one of my mini quilts slash quilted coasters that I have been making recently um you've probably seen quite a few on my Instagram um because they are a great way for me to hone my quilting and sewing skills even more um, and practice every step of the quilting process, which I think, not to do my own horn, but I feel like I've gotten pretty good at it. Um, 
so far especially this one is probably my nicest finished um quilt well not necessarily just this one i sold a couple from my shop which are also some of my best work but this one is made for my cousin um who is a very dear 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 family member of mine <laughs> obviously family members they're my cousin um and i love them very much we are the queer cousins of my family. We love it. The queer trans cousins represent. <laughs> if you're a queer trans cousin, I love you. And same. <laughs> Anyways, yes, this is for my queer trans cousin. And it's so precious and special to me in so many ways. And I'm sure it will be very special to them in very many ways. But it's just lovely. So the fabric is by, this is linen. This is cotton. And this is also a cotton, and the backing is also a quilting cotton. Um, or I don't know if it's quilter's cotton, but it is cotton. Um, so the linen is by a company um, called Not Perfect Linen, who I follow on Instagram, but they have an Etsy shop where they sell um, linen garments that are made and dyed and everything by them. And what I did is I really wanted to get a sense of the colors of their garments because I really love linen garments. Uh, I don't own any myself, but I wanted to get a sense of what their colors kind of looked like. So they have an option where you can purchase a little pouch of fabric samples from them, which a lot of, you know, sewing companies do that. And I got the fabric samples and I was like, hmm, what could I do with these? I can make patchwork <laughs> so I have been having a blast making little nine blocks mainly but also other like patchwork designs with them with the fabric samples and I love creating these little color stories in the nine block pattern especially super fun and so yeah and then the this white cotton is like a pillowcase um, that we've had for a long time and then the binding is by a company called Blackbird Fabrics, I believe. I'll link, again, all this down below. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the cotton, but I know it's it's a very special um, cotton blend, or not cotton blend, cotton that they do. Um, and yeah, it's lovely. I loved this color and I love the feel of the fabric. I will say it's a little trickier for me to quilt with it because it's not quite as thick and manageable as Coulter's cotton. It's a little thinner and more airy, which would be amazing for a full garment in it. Um, but it's manageable enough to do binding in for me. And then the backing is the most special fabric of all, um, which I love so much. So you can already see a hint of this illustrator here on my wall in this calendar form. Um, but the backing fabric is by an artist and illustrator that I deeply, deeply love and admire and have supported online for very many years um, named Phoebe Wall. And if you follow me online, once again, you've probably seen me share um, her stuff, her illustrations, her products, her fabrics, everything about her aesthetic speaks to me. <laughs> And I wish I lived in the Pacific Northwest and I could like live in the forest and everything that she illustrates just like, just, yeah, it speaks to that element of myself that wants to live in like the forest, like Washington state <laughs> and like be cute. Um, anyways, but this is for my collection that she did called Garden Jubilee for a fabric company named Figo, I believe. And I bought quite a few of her fabrics online. I can link to where I purchased it down below. Um, and it was fairly affordable as well, um, especially for how much you get and the pricelessness of this illustration style. And so there was a set of blocks where you can just buy quilt blocks in this um, fabric sheet. And I've been cutting out these little quilt blocks and making them backings for these little quilted coasters. And they've gotten quite a bit of love on my Instagram and I love them and saying goodbye to another one of these fabric blocks is always tough, but they're super, super, super precious. So yeah, um, so that's this one. And then this is one I still need to just put the binding on, but it's another one. Same fabrics, everything, except it's just in this like lovely green colorway. I think it's kind of getting blown out a little bit, but what, what can you do? And it has this teapot on the back, which is so fitting for it to be a little quilted coaster. 
<sighs> just so cute so cute so yeah i'm gonna do the same binding as this and which is the same as the other one i just like love this as a binding i think it suits every one of them that i've made it's super sweet so yeah those are my little quilt whips and then i have a big quilt whip which i'm excited about <laughs> so i'm gonna grab it i have all my stuff on the floor next to me so that's why i'm dipping in and out um so as i have just spoken at length about phoebe wall and the garden jubilee collection i am making my very first full-size quilt with some of my favorite um, fabrics from the collection and i'm having so much fun with it can you see this fabric are you kidding me the gnomes the little people gnomes the clovers oh my gosh literally so precious it has snails which if you know me i love a snail i love like mushrooms anything foresty and sweet and little critters like speaks to my soul um and i will also say another thing that i adore about phoebe wall and especially like you know this cottage core aesthetic where there's like lots of forest fairies and gnomes and things like that is that she always illustrates people of color in her um designs and especially in this fabric you can see like little brown people of color gnomes and everything and that is so special to me because I've always really liked the nature and cottagecore aesthetics and the fairy aesthetics and the fairy tale stuff and fantasy, everything. Um, but, you know, if you're also a person of color like me, you have probably noticed that a lot of these stories have primarily white people in them. Even if they're mythical creatures, for some reason, a lot of times they have white skin. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I mean, we know why, but... Um, I have a deep appreciation for when I can kind of see myself in these fantasy settings because I like to imagine myself as like a little gnome or a fairy sometimes and yeah it's just nice and I think it's also super important obviously for children. Um, Phoebe Wall has written like a, a children's book before and just seeing these like illustrations in these fantasy settings that also include people of color is just special and lovely and so i'm very excited to have this quilt um that has that sort of representation in it and so yeah so basically i'm not following a pattern for this quilt um i have a batting for it so that's how i decided to size so the batting i bought is 100 percent wool um quilting batting and it is a throw blanket size which i believe is like it's like 50 by 60 ish or something like that and so that's how i kind of measured out how many blocks i'd like to do and i also decided to do a fairly simple pattern or design in terms of patchwork so i'm just doing these little nine blocks and then or like nine patches nine blocks and then these like blank you know just solid blocks and alternating and then as the quilt goes on, you know, it starts with like nine patch, blank block, nine patch, block, and then the next row will kind of be like block, nine patch, block, nine patch, alternating like the color scheme and everything um, like that. And you can kind of see. So I've done three rows of it and I have kind of not been working on this super frequently lately like I had a really big kick with this and I did all these three rows in like a week span um which I think is impressive because again I'm completely hand piecing sewing hand cutting all of this everything and then hand pressing it all the fun stuff um and so yeah I'm, pr I'm really proud of this um but I really want to pick it up again um soon so I can get a little bit more progress with it because um i don't know if i've touched on this but i'm currently a grad student i'm getting my master's degree in social work and so i'm in my last year so it's a two-year program and in my last year so soon i am grappling with the very real prospect that i won't have as many as much time for sewing and quilting and crafting which makes me very sad i'm trying not to think about it too much 
which is also another reason why I started this podcast because I want it to be a way to motivate me more to keep in touch with my crafty self and keep me more like I guess accountable in a way to keep crafting because I don't want to lose this very important aspect of my life um in all of the busyness of school and inevitably trying to find a job <laughs> sorry I'm like, it's just, just the lot gives me indigestion. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that's that. And I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be very precious. Um, and I plan on obviously hand quilting it all as well. And it's just going to be delightful when it's finished, but it's also a delightful project as it's ongoing. Okay. And so... I'm going to go ahead and get into my finished objects finally. I know I've been here for an hour. These are going to be kind of long, so literally kudos to you if you have stayed this long. <laughs> so this is my first knitting whip that, or not whip, FO, my finished object that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> so should I put it on? Don't make me put it on. Have you seen that as a hell sketch where it's like, don't make me sing? Yeah. Um, anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna put it on. Oh god, my glasses. Oh my gosh, I look like so adorable. So you probably know what this pattern is. This is the Balaclava number one by Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, I've never knit any of their patterns before. This is my first one. But this is a very famous, I think, um, well-known balaclava pattern. It's probably kind of funny that I knit it in the middle of summer, <laughs> but I've been wanting to knit this for a while, um, and I'm really glad I did. So, here it is on. I'm going to go ahead and take it off so I can ooh, not sweat my head off. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of this. I took my time with a lot of the finishing details to make it look extra nice. But you might notice it's extra special because it's knit with the very beautiful yarn. Actually, two beautiful yarns, if I may say so myself. But one of the yarns is my very own hand spun yarn. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> um, so I spun this yarn. I don't even know how long ago now. It was over a year ago. It was one of my very first yarns I ever spun. It is spun with Malabrigo Nube um, Merino Wool Roving in this beautiful colorway. I believe it's Archangel. I don't know. I didn't write it down. Um, so this was a combed um, roving, I believe is a term. I spun it worsted, and it's a very um, fine fingering weight slash some parts I could kind of see being a sport weight, but, you know, it's a hand spun yarn so it's a little bit here and there um <laughs> but it's mostly fingering and i was very proud of it when i finished it it's very soft um merino and especially malabrigo nube merino is kind of infamous for not being the greatest to spin with um i can talk more about it in a pre in a next episode but basically it's kind of known um in terms of when you get the actual fiber as being very compacted when you purchase it um and obviously if you're a spinner you know that that's not always the greatest um, thing when you get a fiber and um, it requires a little bit of extra prep in that sense before spinning with it just because it's harder to draft out a very compacted squished up fiber um i also read that some of the people who got malabrigo nube had found some matting and felting, I guess is the more accurate term, in the roving, and those parts were impossible to spin, so they had to rip them out. Um, and also, I also heard that some of the some of the rovings had um, parts that were undyed completely. So, you know, it looked like a beautiful color on the outside, but the core of it would be white still, and because the dye didn't fully penetrate, and just due to however they um, however their dyeing process works. I believe they're kettle dyed, but don't quote me on it. Um, but I had done some research on this fiber, so that's what I found out, but I had already purchased it um, before I found that all that stuff out. And I just turned out to get very um, 
lucky with the the fibers that I got in terms of not a lot of felting um, not a lot of undyed parts I mean this is super vibrant and colorful um, I got a really good fiber so I don't know you know all that you know can you can consider when you buy that fiber but for me personally it worked out really well um, super beautiful spin I also prepared this spin it is a worsted spun and I prepared it um, as a fractal spin I don't know if I did the fractal spin correct at this point in time I knew that you had to kind of um, pull it apart like pull the um, the fiber in half and then separate that in half and that in half and then those in halves and then you do all this stuff and I don't quite remember <laughs> so I I tried to do that um, I don't know what it really ended up being but I think it's beautiful nonetheless and it does have like some beautiful striping in there which is gorgeous and I knit this held together with Ritual Dyes um, Fay Mohair. I believe the colorway is called Tree Line, but again, don't quote me on it because I don't remember. Um, I don't have the ball band. I'll try to be better about that in the future. Um, but yeah, it just has the most beautiful halo. It's a green um, mohair. It's a silk mohair. And then I held it together with my hand spun. And it's just like a beautiful, beautiful effect. It's fun. It's a uh, very a lot more colorful than I would usually wear, but I think it it's, it suits my kind of aesthetic with the green halo all around it. I just think it's it will go beautifully with my knits. Um, and I'll be wearing this all fall and winter as soon as it gets cold enough to wear this. Even if it gets below seventy degrees, I'm wearing this every day. <laughs> like that's just how I'm gonna roll. Um, but yeah, I will say. Um, I'm super proud of this, but I'm even more proud of my hand spun when I was knitting with this because I shared it on my Instagram and my lovely Instagram friend, um, Self Adornments, said or thought it was spin cycle. What? Okay, sorry. I feel like I'm like bragging. I'm like, oh my god. But um, that hyped me up because I, I really love the way spin cycle yarns look. I mean, obviously they're super popular, like Andrew Mowry, I don't think has knit or like designed one thing without spin cycle yarns in like the past I don't know how long um but you know spin cycles everywhere beautiful yarn I've never knit with them never purchased it before but I admire the way it looks and when Natasha said it looked like spin cycle I was like oh my gosh day made year made <laughs> so I just had to share that here because I try to tell my partner and he was like what <laughs> like what's spin cycle and I'm like never mind <laughs> but I know y'all will appreciate it so yeah that's my balaclava number one which I love and it's very soft and sweet my next finished object is a another Jessie May design Ooh, what's this Ooh, it's kind of sheer She's fun. She's flirty. She's purpley. She's loosey goosey. Um, this is the My Little Secret crop. And this is knit in a yarn by a indie dyer named Junk Yarn. And it's in the colorway, it's their smooth sock yarn. It's in the colorway um, Daphne. And I I also kind of gravitate towards purpley colors. Um, I like a, like muted purples. Um, as well. I'm kind of straying a little bit more away from the purples lately, but I thought this would be fun for a summer top. And I was right. Um, so I knit this pattern completely as written, but you can probably tell that I did knit it at a very loose gauge. Um, so I knit these, knit this on um, size 7 needles compared to, I believe, the recommended needle size is like a 5 or 6. Um, and I already knit kind of loose. That's my general tension as a knitter. And so I wanted this to be extra loose because as I've spoken about, I live in the high desert in Southern California and you can just imagine, um, it regularly gets in the hundreds of degrees every summer here. So I thought I needed something like this and I was right. Um, yeah, I've worn it once already. So it kind of got a little bit more stretched out even after blocking, but I like that. Um, and yeah, I just, I like this pattern a lot more than I thought I would. 
honestly, because I typically don't wear a lot of tank tops, but lately I've kind of been gravitating towards them a little bit more. I think just because I've been living in this hot climate now for a little while. Um, and I thought that the speckled yarn, you know, would just be perfect for this top. A lot of other knitters have knit this top in these speckled, variegated, indie dyed yarns. Um, and yeah, so I was like, okay, I have to make it, I have to make it. And I'm glad I did. Um, yeah, it's, it surprised me how much I like wearing this. And I definitely want to knit another one, maybe get a little bit of a tighter gauge in a wool for like the fall for layering. And I would love to knit a cardigan to go over it because I think that look is super cute. I wore this um, under a cardigan when on Monday when we took my little baby Spicy <laughs> to the vet. Um, if you've seen, probably seen my Instagram stories talk about all of that, which I'll probably talk more about that situation later on in the podcast maybe the next episode um but yeah so there's that and now it's time for the grand finale and if you follow me you know what this is and this is this is da, 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 da. <laughs> i don't know what that music is boom boom oh no what did i drop i don't know boom I'm just gonna take a moment a moment of silence please for her so this is my first very first stranded color work project and it is the cotton grass jumper by the petite knitter the petite knitter um who is a lovely designer i love all of their designs um, and this is one that was, this pattern was recommended to me um, as a beginner color work project. I think um, back when I wanted to start this project, um, which was already all the way back in like September of 2021, I asked on my Instagram what were some recom recommendations for beginner color work because I really wanted to knit a color work sweater, but I was kind of intimidated, you know, as most people kind of are when you first get into color work because it's like, whoa, two yarns at once? What is this? So <laughs> I was like, okay, let's give it a try. So I did this very, it's a very simple design in terms of color work because you just have two colors. So it's just the gray and the blue. And I knit this, it's so cozy. I want it to be winter right now. Um, I knit this in the beautiful Nuti Den by Owner Oak Air. Oh, so lovely. It is a unspun yarn. I'm sure you've heard about it, especially, especially if you watch a lot of knitting podcasts and you listen or slash watch um, Nicole the Gentle Knitter. Um, she speaks a lot about Nuti Den, so I'm not going to go all into it, but if you're unfamiliar, it's an unspun yarn um, that's sold in these beautiful cakes. I have it right here. Um, these little, oof, dropped it. Lovely cakes. It smells amazing. <laughs> it probably just looked so weird, but it smells lovely. Um, it's lovely. It's just, it's a Swedish wool. It's naturally, it's dyed by them. I think it's naturally dyed. Don't hold me on that, but I know it's, you know, all dyed by Owner Oak Air. They're smaller production. Gorgeous. Um, these colors were, the gray is very much in my, my comfort zone. The blue was where I really stepped out. I was like, okay, let's do this. Like, let's, let's get out there. Um, I purchased the yarn in September. I'm going to stop holding it to myself just cause it's so freaking hot. Um, so I purchased this yarn in September for my 26th birthday and it was a very, very beautiful gift to myself and um you know because I, I had heard people speaking about unspun yarns rustic yarns nuti den this lopi that you know and i really wanted to try it out and so i when i saw that there was a owner oak air um update on my birthday weekend you know don't mind if i do <laughs> so i did <laughs> And they had these colors in their that collection. So this one's called um, Firstina, I believe is how you pronounce it. And then Val is the blue. And I just thought it was so fitting as well in a weird way because I'm, you know, I'm a September baby. So our birthstone is Sapphire. And so I thought this like 
royal blue sapphire color was just like so fitting and it's also beautiful because I intend to wear this in the winter so it's also like very wintry colors and I love the winter too um and so yeah I just thought it was match made in heaven and when I saw this pattern I was like okay I know what I have to do <laughs> so yeah um yeah so I did minimal modifications to this pattern the only mods I made was that I knit the sleeves straight and then I did a little um, bubble sleeve so I held off all of the decreases until right before the cuff and that's what I did there and then I also did just like a typical um, bind off on the edge because I tried to do the sewn tubular bind off in the Nuti Den and that for me was kind of difficult because of um just because of the way the yarn is very fragile I knit with it held double but even still um for me somebody who's kind of you know I tug a lot on my yarn as I knit um it was difficult so I just did a typical um knit bind off you know you knit one knit two stitches flip one over you know how it goes um so yeah I did do the tubular um you know I don't know what it's called not tubular bind off but the one that's for the cast on I don't remember what it's called <laughs> but I did that on the neckline and that worked out for me but it was hard to do on the cuffs and then what other mobs did I do I think that's it I also I did not I did not knit in the um short row shaping in this um I probably should have I just kind of got impatient with this knit um a little bit because it is lovely it was lovely to knit the entire way through since September I spent a very good deal of time on this knit but I was kind of like you know once I got finished with the yoke I just wanted to go straight into the body so I did um I would probably say you know you can you can knit the short row, row shaping it probably would fit you better and when I wear it though it's not super um noticeable in terms of fit like the back the back neckline doesn't dip so low on me to where I would consider it um a problem and um yeah I do notice like you know sometimes when I, when I wear it it kind of gaps like here when I kind of move around if that makes sense like the neckline will kind of like poof, uh, poof out not poof out <laughs> um so that's probably something that could have been um more appropriately managed for with short row shaping but you know we don't care here I just love I love it and it fits me well um without the short, short row shaping so ta-da that was everything so that is probably gonna do it for my very first episode of the knits and notions podcast um oh i should probably say i guess briefly why i'm calling it that um it's just a name i i came up with and i thought it would be very fitting for my podcast because it's kind of i'm talking a lot about like knitting but there's also like the notions you know not necessarily like knitting notions but just like things that come up in my mind but also just like the notions could be like the other crafts that i'm doing you know other things um i don't know i'm just rambling at this point um but yeah so yeah that's been my podcast um again my name is kira you can find me when i'm not doing this podcast on instagram at strange bun so that's strange and bun with two ends at the end um, if you know what that's a reference to, comment down below. What what what's that all about? <laughs> if you know, I'll tell you in the next episode. Just ask me, and I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, um, I do intend to make this podcast once or twice a month. I'm not going to commit to anything, but I had a lot of fun doing this episode, so I want to keep it going. And I do want this to just be a space where um, I can keep my crafty love alive and talk to other people about it because I don't want to get to a space where I'm not doing crafty things as much anymore um, when, you know, school starts and all that stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.